What's up guys? So if you can't tell by the change of scenery, this is my first YouTube video in my new craft room. My boyfriend and I moved in together a couple months ago, but we're finally settled. So I really wanna get rocking on some YouTube videos. So if you have any suggestions for tutorials or just videos you wanna see, make sure to leave them in the comments. I make my new craft room ultra cute. My last one was pretty plain, but this is like the one room in the house I get to have ultra girly. So if you want a tour on my craft room, I would love to give one. So now that we're all caught up, let's get started. I posted a video on TikTok turning a wood breaker into this purse and people were asking for a tutorial but I definitely can't do one on TikTok because it's very a very long and extensive process but I made this one and I'm going to show you guys how to make it step by step. This one I will say I simplified a little bit from this um, just to make it easier for beginners because there were some extra random steps in this that just aren't really necessary to get the same look. So I just made the zipper the whole width on this one and on this one I put like zipper tabs in there and also if you're gonna make one out of a windbreaker or something like really thin like I did, first off I have to say I don't recommend using that fabric at all if you're a beginner um, cause this bag, oh, it was such a pain just because the fabric was so slippery and you have to use a ton of interfacing if you're going to use something that's that thin in order to get a bag to still like stay up like that. So for this one, I just used a faux leather material, which was so much easier to make. Like I'll make this over and over. I have to say I'll probably never ever rework a windbreaker into a purse ever again because it was such a pain. But if you are going to use a thinner material, something like cotton, Probably wouldn't be that much of a pain to work with. Um, just the windbreaker was so slippery and with the interfacing it was just a nightmare because the I used fusible interfacing. So it just like, I couldn't iron it. I couldn't get my iron hot enough because it was like burning the windbreaker material. So I really wouldn't recommend that. But um, if you are gonna use a thinner material, you can do that. The only extra steps is you're gonna wanna add interfacing on all of the panels. But if you use full leather, you won't have to do that. So if this is your first time making a purse, I definitely recommend just using something strong and sturdy like full leather so it can still stand up. But let's get into it. Here are the pattern pieces you're gonna need. You can make it whatever size or shape you want, but you need to make sure that the outer edge of the gusset is the same length as the body of the purse. For materials, you're gonna need outer fabric. I recommend faux leather, lining fabric, something to cut with, sewing clips because you don't want to use pins on faux leather, pins, a zipper, and you want to make sure the zipper is at least as long as the top of the body, and fusible interfacing is optional. And now it's time to trace and cut our pattern pieces. For the faux leather, I like to use a sharpie, but for my lining fabric, I generally just use pins or pattern weights and cut them out with a rotary cutter. Make sure to really take your time while you're cutting out these pieces so they all match up when you're putting it together. Once you have all of your pattern pieces cut out, it should look something like this. And now we're gonna start with the pocket. So I'm taking my pocket piece and my piece of interfacing that I have and fusing them together. To do this, you just use parchment paper and then go over it with an iron until it's fused. Now I'm gonna fold that piece in half and clip all of the other sides down. Now I'm going to sew around all of those edges, leaving about a 2 inch turning gap in the middle. And before I turn that right side out, I'm going to clip the corners just to make it less bulky. And now I'm just going to turn that pocket right side out. So now you're gonna have something like this and you're gonna put that opening at the bottom and then top stitch the top of the pocket. And once you do that, you can put that on one of the body lining pieces and sew around the three sides. And now you're gonna grab your zipper, put it right side up at the top of that lining body piece and pin it. And once you have it all pinned on, you can cut off the excess of your zipper, but I still left like an inch extra. Now, sew using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. It doesn't have to be perfectly an eighth, but you just want to make sure that it's definitely smaller than a quarter of an inch. 
Now you should have something like this and you're going to grab one of the outer body pieces and put the right side down and then pin it to that same side of the zipper. And now you're going to sew using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now we should have something like this. So you're going to fold that lining piece under and then kind of press that outer piece against the zipper because we're going to top stitch along that. I use an eighth of an inch seam allowance to do my top stitching and you really want to take your time with this step because it absolutely makes or breaks a project. Sloppy top stitching will make the whole thing look a mess, but great top stitching will make it look so professional. Now you're going to grab your other lining body piece and put that right sides together with the other piece of lining and pin it to the other side of the zipper. So now that you have this, you're going to want to pin the other side of the lining to that gusset lining, but you're going to want to make sure to leave a turning gap in the bottom edge. So I'm leaving like a four inch gap from there to there so I can turn it right side out. So now I'm just sewing that together using three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I don't know if you can see, but I forgot to add my turning gap in there. So I had to go back in and seam rip like those four inches in the middle, but there it is. And now I'm going in and trimming off some of those big seam allowances, especially the faux leather because it looks ultra bulky, especially around the curves once you turn it right side out, but don't get too close to your seam. Now for the strap, you can do the strap really any way you want. You just want to make sure it's the same width as the gusset when you're done with it or smaller. It can't be bigger than the gusset because it won't like fit when you try to put it back into the purse. The way I'm making the straps today is I'm just folding over each side and finger pressing it because I don't want to use an iron on the faux leather material, but if you're using something that can be ironed, it definitely looks good if you press it down real nice. But you can really make the strap however you want as long as it's not wider than the width of your finished gusset of the purse. So now I'm just sewing down each side of the strap using about an eighth of an inch seam allowance and try to make this look as neat as possible as well. So now that the strap is done, you'll kind of see what I mean by making sure it's not wider than the gusset because you need to put the strap in that little hole where the gussets meet 
to sew it together. So I fish it through one side and then grab it from the other side. This step's kind of hard, but just make sure that it's not twisted or anything so it's not twisted when you sew it. So you can see that I'm just kind of putting that back in there and then you're gonna wanna pin the strap in between the two pieces of the gussets. And now you're just gonna wanna sew that using like 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, just back and forth. And then repeat on the other side. And now through the turning hole, I am turning the whole purse right side out before I trim any more seam allowances or anything, just to make sure that I sewed everything correctly and that everything looks good. So the only issues I'm seeing is around the handles, it looks super bulky. So I just turned it back inside out and cut those off. I also forgot to put a little seam in one of the gussets, so I sewed that real quick. And then turned it back right side out, which once again took forever, but it looks so much nicer now that I did that. And now that everything looks good, I can take my turning hole and sew it up. So I just folded it up and did a straight stitch because I'm lazy, but you can also hand sew it but that's how mine looked and then you're done. I hope you guys liked this video and if you did, please like, comment, subscribe and turn on post notifications so you can see my next tutorials. And also feel free to share this with a friend who's on their own sewing journey because I feel like these little bags are just what everyone needs in their wardrobe and it's so fun to be able to make them yourself. And if you guys want to send me a picture of the bag that you make using this tutorial, please feel free to DM me a picture on Instagram. I absolutely love seeing what you guys make using my tutorials. Make sure to leave a comment on what video you want to see next, and I'll see you guys soon.